Hello, everyone, and welcome to our continuing uh, coverage of Dreamforce 2024. We're going to be talking about data governance today with Sachin Sangani, who is the CEO of Alation. Sachin, welcome back to the Cube. Thank you for having me. It's always fun to be here and to see you today. Well, so today we're going to be connecting the dots between what you do and what's going on in the um, world of Salesforce. Uh, but before we go there, I'd like to uh, maybe ask you to remind us of your solution. I mean, you talk about federated governance. So what do you do and, and why does it matter? Absolutely. So all enterprises are trying to leverage their data to better use. And what Alation does is provides a data intelligence platform. And that what that platform does is it helps enterprises understand their data so that they can deliver value from their data and AI initiatives. Often what you find is that people have a lot of hope and spend and aspiration around data and certainly now more recently around AI, but often fail to turn those aspirations into production use cases that produce real business value. And we think that by having more intelligence about the data, how it's used, what's important, what can be trusted, how to achieve more trust with your data, uh, you certainly can see better returns. And that's what our over 600 customers have seen. And certainly that's why we help 40% of the Fortune 100 with their data. Right. And the reality is there is no AI without data to begin with, but it can't just be any data, which is why what you do is a really foundational. And I really want to uh, you know, reiterate this. You, you don't have to be an AI specialist to understand this point. It, had, it has to be good data that is compliant, that is uh, governed, uh, because there is this big topic, this big theme uh, at Salesforce um, around AI and around trust in AI. I think there's definitely there are many sessions uh, about that. So how does your partnership with Salesforce uh, come into play? Uh, and maybe you can tell us about some of the uh, recent announcements you've just made. Yeah, so we've announced integration with Salesforce's data cloud. And what that means is that we are able to catalog and help customers govern their entire Salesforce data estate, uh, which not only includes all the out of the box objects that come with Salesforce, your opportunities, your customers, but also data lake specific objects, uh, data cloud specific objects, calculations that are specific to Salesforce, because as we all know, customers consistently leverage Salesforce as a platform and which means they customize it to a great extent. And that customization obviously is super useful in helping customers achieve their own business outcomes and customize Salesforce to their business, but really, really tough to contend with when you're trying to analyze the information at scale or leverage it in models. And so what we do is we help them understand what they've done in order to be able to help them leverage the data in the best possible way. Right. So th let's double click on that because that's a very important um, conversation. So. Uh, specifically, let's say I'm a Salesforce um, admin or Salesforce lead. Uh, I'm not a data or an AI guru. I I know CRM. I know uh, you know. Uh, I know sales management. I know marketing. That's what I do. So, how does your integration uh, really help with this notion of distrust that could come up as organizations roll roll out new AI models, new maybe Gen AI models and, and are getting their feet wet, literally. Yep. So every Salesforce, every marketing organization is trying to get better returns for their spend. And certainly a big part of doing that is having a better understanding of your customer, deploying the best technology. And certainly every one of these folks that we're talking about and that are likely listening to this interview have been pitched by you know, internal folks, external folks, new software vendors, all to basically say, hey, we can help you monetize your data better. And in fact, if you do nothing, you're probably going to be in a pretty tough state because most of your competitors will be leveraging AI to interact with customers and to gain information about them. Now, if you're a Salesforce administrator, therefore, people are consistently coming after you to build applications on top of the data and the infrastructure that you provide through your Salesforce environment and instance. And of course, you want to make sure that that data is the right data. Are folks using the right field for pipeline stage? Are people entering the right information? Are we actually tagging our customers with the right names and using the right code values for that information? These seem like trivial things, 
but it's probably where you're going to spend a lot of time. And so understanding how to govern that data, knowing what is the right reference data to leverage, knowing exactly what the quality standards are for the data that will be leveraged in these applications, which fields and which columns to use, which customized objects to use. These are all very detailed questions, but critical if you want to get to the right answer. And so what we do is we help you basically understand what you've done, what your organization has done, and we help you govern those objects and artifacts so the right people can use the right data for the right applications. All right, and that's really the, the before and after. You could go into this blind or you could do this knowing exactly what you're doing, which is, uh, I think, what the value proposition is here for the, the integration. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you think about uh, data governance. Uh, so, so tell me, how does that also help driving uh, real-time insights? Uh, assuming I've, I've done my integration correctly, I'm using the right data, and it could be after sorting through literally billions of, 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 of data objects, what type of insights can I gain with your solution beyond what I had before? Well, really, I mean, it's all about fidelity in the actual models and making sure that those models are correct. And so you can imagine a customer service interaction chatbot. You know, that's probably the most common thing that people have interacted with, where you're trying to basically resolve a customer issue. And that customer issue might have um, some information that it gleans from articles and knowledge bases that you've created over time. You might have documentation that's internal. And all of that might help the chatbot achieve greater fidelity. On the other hand, it might also require customer-specific information, information about um, where that customer might live, and therefore they might get different answers or what, what products that customer has purchased. And those facts, th those bits of information come out of structured data systems. And to tell these LLMs how to interact with these structured data systems is tricky because LLMs mostly are fed off of and developed by leveraging unstructured data. And so now you have this interesting interplay between the you know, uh, very deterministic you know, hard facts of your business, which really mostly resides in your structured data estate, and this sort of stochastic, you know, somewhat squishy, not very predictable information in your unstructured data estate. So you've got these two different pipelines, and then the question is, how do they come together and make sense for the customer? And so for anything that you can imagine, whether it's, you know, um, what products ought I to buy to supplement the products that I've already purchased? Or, you know, where do I get the best technician to service my product that I purchased? You know, these are all questions that um, agents ought to be able to answer, but require a interplay between what you know in your, in your, in your structured data estate and you know all of the stochastic information, which you might know in your unstructured estate. Yes, it does make a lot of sense because you think about you know a lot of Salesforce environments. Essentially, you have well fields, you have records, and you have a bunch of attachments and documents that come with uh, the uh, transaction. And looking at the products, um, very similarly, you may have pricing information, reference numbers, model numbers, and that ties into manuals to your point. So. Um, I think a lot of this uh, is absolutely key, but there is another dimension uh, that I want to bring up because while well, we're talking here about sort of the everything's going fine, we're going to be doing AI, we're going to be responsible, we're going to leverage uh, Alation in order to really get the right data into our models. Uh, it, the other question that comes up is compliance. Uh, there is somebody waiting right around the corner trying to see what you're doing and probably what you're not doing right. So how does your integration with Salesforce help uh, by design with compliance requirements uh, as people really evolve into this more automated uh, AI world uh, to uh, optimize their business? Important to understand that the compliance regime is constantly changing. In the EU, you have the AI Act. There's a emerging potentially um, you know, very strict set of regulations that may be enacted here in California. We'll wait and see whether that actually happens. Um, and certainly even before these things existed, you'd have regulations like the California Privacy Act, DCPA and GPR. And so understanding um, how to build ethical models, models that, um, you know, have a kill switch, models that are not revealing private information is really all about understanding the data that's getting fed to these models and how they've been produced. And so how do you do that? Well, first of all, you have to know where the models have been generated and where they come from. You have to know what information you're feeding to that model, whether that's on a RAG basis for 
you know, having a sort of assisted search and 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 other internal documents, or alternatively, what context and what prompts you're feeding to these models to give you better information. And all of that really requires a very deep understanding of the data that you've got, um, both within your Salesforce environment, but also outside of it. And that's absolutely why, you know, regulation, it was going to require a very, very strong process to be able to prove how you got to an answer. Because these models, as I said before, are fundamentally stochastic. And that means that you don't get pricked or you can't predict the response. Small changes in inputs might produce massive changes in outputs. And given that's the case, what you really need is lineage and provenance. What you really need is the ability to say, this is how I got to this answer. This is how it was produced. And the only way you can do that is through solid understanding of your data. It reminds me of this uh, this idea of that 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 butterfly somewhere uh, around the world that you know flaps the <laughs> its wings in a certain way and that creates a storm somewhere else um, weeks later. Uh, but yes, essentially these are functions that you could input the same thing or almost the same thing and get very different results. Uh, those are very weird functions, uh, but but that's really the nature of really how um, humans think in, in many ways, and it's what we're trying to reproduce. Yet here we're trying to be accurate. We're trying to give people the right data. We're trying to make sure it's also done in a way that is going to meet all the requirements uh, of the regulations, but also done in a way such that it uh, it, it is in itself uh, a, a compliant uh, process. I'm, I'm very curious to see what happens with regulation moving forward on this topic. I think the, uh, the, the one of the one of the questions I had for you is, is, is there something uh, with metadata that uh, we should really consider in this com in this complex uh, construct here? And specifically, is that something you're looking into? Absolutely. I mean, you know, one could describe Alation as a metadata um, system or a metadata uh, reference system. And we certainly glean and take metadata from all of the data sources that we connect to. We're not a data storage system. We don't try to replicate all of the information you have. We're just trying to learn about the information um, through the information that describes it, the metadata. Um, and the metadata is actually much more critical to determining whether something is useful or correct or usable in a certain context. And that is information that not only is useful for humans, but useful for models as well. Because if you want to know um, what gross churn was, if you want to know what revenue growth was, if you want to know what profit margins are, if you want to know um, you know, what your share of wallet might be. All of those terms are terms of art. They require definitions. They require mapping to specific physical in bits of information. And so the metadata is going to help you understand how to translate the English into something that a system, a computer system can process and understand. Right. And this is where it gets a little more technical, but it is important, I think, to educate the market on this topic, especially if you think about Salesforce users. I don't think they wake up in the morning thinking about metadata uh, as much as you probably do, but it's very key. And I think understanding this as a holistic uh, intertwined set of requirements is absolutely critical. Look, um, we've covered a lot of ground here, and um, I'd like to just you know ask you as you think about Dreamforce 2024, what are you looking uh, forward to? What's coming next uh, between Elation and Salesforce? And what can we expect uh, from you guys? Yeah, it's really exciting because I think there's obviously clear recognition from Salesforce that the world is going the way of AI and that many applications that exist today would probably be, you know, applications that are themselves are going to be agentic or ones that are basically um, intermediate through an AI uh, interface rather than through the sort of traditional user interface that we're used to. So knowing that, I think you obviously have to develop applications in a new and different way. And we're excited to be very deeply a part of that supply chain to be able to help customers and clients develop applications that work, applications that are um, powerful, applications that are mostly correct, and applications that are leveraging the best data that they have. And so for us, this is an, an important step. It's one that we've taken with all of our many partners in technology and certainly with our many customers and their custom applications. And Salesforce has a very important ecosystem, and we're excited to be a part of it. Absolutely. And is it Salesforce or Agent Force? As Mark Benioff suggested, <laughs> they might want to change the name. Um, well, Satyan, thank you so much uh, for your time today. And thank you, everybody, for uh, watching this uh, continuing coverage of Dreamforce 2024 from the Cube Research. My name is Christoph Bertrand. I'm principal analyst here at the Cube Research. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>